Hey everybody, welcome to the video lesson series on echinoderms. This is going to be video one, and it will cover the basic characteristics of echinoderms. So let's not waste time uh, looking at me, and let's go ahead and jump right into this lesson. All right, everybody, welcome to our next unit. This is going to be on phylum Echinodermata. Uh, the, this phylum is the phylum of, as the name would suggest, this is the spiny skinned. Echino means uh, spiny and derm is in reference to the skin. Uh, that should be familiar if you've ever been to the dermatologist. You should know that derm is always in reference to the skin. So these are the spiny skinned creatures, and they include sea stars, brittle stars, sea urchins, sea cucumbers, and the ever popular sea lilies. So this is a picture of a classic sea star. Notice we call them sea stars and not starfish. They are not fish. They are echinoderms, uh, and to call them fish is... Uh, technically uh, incorrect. So we refer to them as sea stars. This is a brittle star. It gets its name because its arms are very thin and it, it has a very fragile appearance. So that's how it gets the name brittle star. This is a spiny sea urchin. And underneath all of those spines, you will see a very similar body plan to the sea star just without the arms. And this is a sea cucumber. And there are lots of different uh, shapes and sizes of sea cucumbers, but um, they're very slow, methodical creatures. They just kind of cruise around on the bottom and do their thing, uh, almost as if you just took a cucumber and laid it down on the bottom of the ocean. That's, that's their body plan, that's their shape. They do have the, they resemble a cucumber, hence their name. And then, of course, we have the sea lily. Uh, this is something that kind of resembles uh, a flower known as a lily, and that is how it got its name. Let's talk about the characteristics of phylum echinodermata. First, uh, in the adult, they have radial, a radial symmetry. Uh, and most of them will have what is called pentamerous, which means you can divide them into five uh, equal planes. So if we look, this is a fly. A fly has bilateral symmetry. So an organism with bilateral symmetry can only be divided into equal right and left portions through one plane. And that is right here down between the middle of the eyes. Now, if you look at the sea star and you take this plane right here, you can go straight across and that would divide it into five equal portions. Take this and go right down that arm. That would give you right and left halves that are equal. If you take this plane and go right down this arm, that would divide it into right and left portions, equal portions. So there are five planes that a sea star can be divided into equal right and left portions which is unlike the fly, again, bilateral, there's only one plane. So that is hopefully will explain how pentamerous symmetry is a form of radial symmetry. Its body plan radiates from a central axis. Echinoderms have no head or brain. They have um, very few specialized organs. So internally, there are, they are pretty basic, pretty simple. Their nervous system, uh, like we said, has no brain, but it is uh, what we call circumoral, which means around the mouth, uh, ring of ganglions. So there is a collection of nerve cells that make a ring around the mouth of the sea star. And that is as close to a brain as it's going to get. And then it has radial nerves, which mean the nerves will radiate away from that ring around the middle of the core of the body and will radiate down each of the arms. 
more characteristics of the echinoderm. They have an endoskeleton of what is called dermal calcareous ossicles, which means uh, mineralized calcium that forms an internal framework. And here you can see uh, in this picture, we have a different couple different views. This would be one of the arms from above. Looking down on it, you can see the framework, uh, the support framework that is provided by the uh, mineral mineralized calcium. It makes kind of a net to help support the body of the sea star. And here you can see this would be the arm cut, and we're looking down the arm towards, if we were in the, the, the ring, the core of the body, looking down the arm. So this is the underneath side, the groove right there. And then there's that net of calcium that helps support its body. Other characteristics, they have what's called a water vascular system of coelomic origin, which means it originates from their coelom or body cavity. So this is a diagram of that water vascular system. Water is, is drawn into the system through the madreporite. And it goes down the stone canal into the ring canal, which goes around the central portion of the animal's body. And then radiating from the ring canal, you have the radial canals as they go down each arm. And then connected to each radial canal are the tube feet. And they are connected. Uh, and they, that's how the tube feet, which are these little guys right here, uh, those tube feet are what uh, enable the sea star to move along its environment. And they're a series of suction cups. So they just reach out with a whole bunch of these little tube feet, stick to the bottom, and then they bend and they move along. And they do this by pumping water. So when the sea star wants to attach, it simply uh, squeezes the water out of this bulb and then as it lets go, it creates a pressure gradient or suction, and it attaches to whatever it's going to attach to, including its prey. Respiration are by dermal bronchii, which are uh, branches of tubes through the skin, dermal. So it gets its oxygen from the water through the skin. It will also get oxygen from the water through its tube feet and what is known as the respiratory tree, which branches and goes down into each of those arms. They have separate sexes, or what is known as dioecious, which means they do have males and females, and fertilization is usually external. So the female will lay the eggs, and the male will then fertilize the eggs outside of her body. That's what external fertilization means. Now they do have uh, another way of reproduction and that is by regeneration. They are all marine and virtually all are benthic, which means they all live on the bottom. They just crawl around where they need to go. They are found in all of the oceans all across the world and at all depths. So when our scientists have explored the absolute deepest depths of the ocean, they have found echinoderms down, we're talking miles deep, way down at the bottom, um, where light doesn't reach. It's totally pitch black, and there are echinoderms that live down there. Many of them are predators. They feed on sedentary or sessile prey. So this, if you look closely, this is a sea star wrapping itself around a poor clam. Uh, this clam has no escape. Uh, the sea star is going to open it and devour it inside its shell. And we'll talk more about how it does that uh, in, in a few slides. Probably uh, one of the future lessons, video lessons. Continuing on with characteristics of Echinodermata, the brittle stars are most active, meaning that uh, obviously that they're going to be moving around more than any of the others. They use their arms to help navigate through their, their environment. Sea urchins feed chiefly on algae or detritus. Now, detritus 
is dead and decaying organic matter found on the bottom. Uh, your sea urchins will come in and clean that stuff up. All right, that's going to be enough for today's video lesson. Okay, that's going to conclude this video lesson. So if we are on remote, this is the time where we need to go over to Schoology, find the exit slip for video lesson one on Econoderms, and answer those questions. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.